Welcome to Court Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of court cutting, including YouTube TV, Sling TV, and Fubo may have to raise their prices. If local stations get their way, they'll have to negotiate with them, and they may have to pay new fees to the FCC. We'll break down everything you need to know about that and what's happening, and maybe how you can help stop it. Um, there's a new effort to stop IPTV services, make, expanding criminal charges and making it required to block them. We'll let you know what's happening there. 60% of Americans are ditching cable TV and now become cord cutters. We got a new survey that takes a look at just how big cord cuttings become in the last few years. And lastly, a new or a existing streaming service has lowered its price. In a day and age of price hikes, there's one lowering its price. We'll let you know everything you need to know about it and more. First though, hey, if you want to find out more about these stories, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, I'll put a link to each story there. And uh, you can read about them for yourself and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of these stories. If you're new here or you've been here a while, I apologize I'm traveling and this is not our normal studio, but if you like what we do here, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people, helping us grow, helping us support our families. And with that said, quick update. I know yesterday I, at this video, I said that, hey, there's a hurricane coming here to Florida. I'm in Florida on vacation for a bit. We may bug out here, head down south to avoid it. Good news, bad news for the people who are gonna hit. But for us, that storm has moved northwest a little bit so that we're now just in a tropical storm area. And where we are is on pretty high land and we feel pretty good. We do still have a backup plan if that storm would trend down at all it would have to trend down a lot uh, very far away to become a severe issue for us um, for now we're going to stay here but if i do happen to lose power it may mean no video tomorrow just keep that in mind but i as of now I anticipate being here like everything normal tomorrow so with that said let's dive into it for some time now local abc station owners so not abc nbc fox but like places like nextstar are pushing to get the FCC to reclassify live TV streaming services like YouTube TV, Sling TV, and more as cable companies. Currently, cable companies have one set of rules they have to oh, buy by with the FCC and streaming services like Fubo and YouTube TV and more have a separate set. Locals don't like that because it allows YouTube TV and Fubo and more to strike deals with Paramount, Disney, and more, and get rights to all the local ABC, all the local CBS, and more in one deal with a big parent company. Cable companies have to go local by local to strike a deal with each local company there. So, uh, for example, right now, Drexstar is in the middle of a blackout because Drexstar has to negotiate directly with, um, or DirecTV has to dr negotiate directly with Nextstar to get all the Nextstar owned locals. If the, the locals get their way, they're going to force the FCC to make um, YouTube TV do that with them and have to go by each individual one. Maybe saying, Luke, what about um, DirecTV Stream? How come they lost it then? Well, DirecTV uses their DirecTV contract to also do DirecTV Stream. So with no DirecTV contract, no DirecTV Stream locals. But there's an additional catch here. The FCC charges about $1.20 some per subscriber to get... Um, access to or as a regulatory fee per year if this goes through live tv streaming services are going to have to pay over 16 million dollars to the fcc every year this is going to drive up the cost on top of the possibility of locals forcing youtube tv and more to pay money and drive up the cost of it because they're going to, have to pay more money for locals than they do now under the current contracts now if you want to help keep the cost of streaming down, you may want to think about writing to the FCC and telling them, no, YouTube TV and these other companies should not be treated like cable. They're a different situation. There are a bunch of landlines running through local townships and more that the FCC has to regulate um, with this. So think about that if you do want to have a proactive stance here. But if locals get this way, it could mean paying more for local channels. It could mean paying more to the FCC for live TV services that will probably mean it'll get passed on to you with that. All right, let's keep moving along. In Europe, there's a new law that's going to target IPTV services in an attempt to block them. It's going to force internet service providers to target illegal IPTV streaming services to shut them down. Now, this is part of a ongoing war we're seeing against it. As core cutting has grown, an increasing number of companies have pushed for the ability to um, block IPTV services to force people to go from pirate services to legal services to help offset their um, costs. 
in a growing number of countries, there's an effort to make IPTV not just a civil case, but a criminal case. In the United States, they passed that law, and we've already seen several IPTV owners face criminal charges and get very long jail sentences for this. Now in the UK, we're seeing that. Now in Italy, they're passing a law to force companies to stop um, this online piracy. Increasingly, piracy is becoming a major issue that companies are paying attention to as they desire to crack down on um, illegal streams to help drive people to legal services. Look for this to become more and more popular. In the United States, they may have made it criminal, but there's a push to also force internet service providers to detect these illegal streams and stop it before it could ever get to you. You may request it, your internet service provider will go, nope, it's an illegal stream, we have to shut it off. We'll see if that comes in the United States. All right, there's a new report from Comscore, one of the most respected groups that tracks um, the TV industry that says over 60% of Americans with a connected home, so people on the internet, American households with internet connection, 60% of them now pay um, for streaming and don't pay for cable TV. This is a huge change here from just 2019 when it was 37% in May of 2019. Cord cutting has exploded. What's very interesting here, it wasn't that long ago that people said that cord cutting was just a fringe activity, right? Few like kids in their mom's basement who don't want to pay for stuff, all those kind of comments you probably heard before. Just a bunch of college students and they'll pay for cable when they get older. Well, now cord cutting is the mass, vast majority. 60% of American households now reportedly just pay for streaming services and don't use a traditional cable TV like provider. Question for you, are you part of that? Were you one of the people who cut the cord since 2019, May 2019 to now? That's a pretty big jump. And if this continues, we could see cable becoming an increasingly small minority. That's why we're seeing so much focus right now on streaming like Disney+, Plus, Peacock, Max, and more. Paramount Plus is another one from major media companies becoming the main focus. It's because of the growth of core cutting and the fact that, hey, cable TV is not what it once was. All right, great news for Stars customers. In a change of heart, Stars is lowering the price. Now, in a day and age where a lot of services are facing um, inflation and other issues and raising the price, Stars is lowering their annual pat price from $74.99 down to $69.99, so about $5 off the, off the yearly subscription. Now, I've been a big fan of annual subscriptions. A few things annual subscriptions do for you, they lock your price in, help you avoid price hikes. For example, uh, if you, for example, renewed Disney Plus right before the price hike on an annual plan, you don't have to worry about that price hike for a whole year. Helps give you some protection there. But also, you also save based on the monthly rate. It's a lot cheaper for most streaming services to do the annual versus the yearly. So if you know there, there's a service, in my house it's Disney Plus right now. I have a two-year-old, I have a 10-year-old, it's almost 11. They love Disney Plus. Well, I'm no, I'm not getting rid of Disney Plus. We just did a long car trip from Michigan to Florida. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse was a regular sound in the back of my car for a day. Uh, so the annual plan makes sense to me if you intend to use it all year. But good news, Stars is lowering the price. Always take advantage of those annual plans or any service that you plan to use on a regular basis. All right, FCC is passing a new rule that will help make wireless internet, wireless home internet services, fixed wireless services, as some people call them, faster and reach more people. The FCC has approved commercial testing of the five gigahertz range. Now you probably know in your home, you have a like a standard Wi-Fi and the one that says like five gigahertz. Now there's a six gigahertz. Now this six gigahertz, I hope I said that right the first time I said it, standard will offer better range and better speeds by offering more bandwidth with it. Um, for fixed wireless. This will bring fixed wireless home internet to more people and allow the faster internet speeds because it has more spectrum range, which allows for less clogged up um, networks and allow more people to use the same amount of um, same towers for more spectrum. The real important thing here is the FCC has allowed this for testing. Companies like Google, um, Qualcomm, and more, um, Nokia, is one of them too, have signed on to start testing out this to bring six gigahertz internet, not just for in your home with your Wi-Fi network, maybe a new option, but from towers in your town, wirelessly transmitted to your home for faster fixed wireless home internet. And this should reach further than the current standards, allowing more people to be able to sign up for wireless home internet. 
one more effort in the core cutting 2.0 as I call it, the ability to break free from cable TV and cable internet and go completely free from cable companies. Currently in testing, no timeline of when this will go public, but it's a step in the right direction and I'm very excited to see it happen. All right, be very careful of scams. Scammers are targeting core cutters. We're hearing increased number of people saying they looked up customer service phone numbers online, called what they thought was a company, ended up talking to people impersonating that company, trying to sell you service or charge you for customer service that should be free. Be very careful. This was very big for Roku for a while. A lot of scammers were uh, tricking people into calling them to activate the Roku and then they would charge them sometimes a hundred dollar fee up front or they would sign them up for reoccurring fees saying that was the fee you need to use your Roku. While Roku changed their system to kind of prevent them, you no longer um, need to call, you need, don't need, need to do a lot of stuff. You can do it all through a direct email that will send you. That helps cut back on the scammers. So scammers are now trying to impersonate live TV streaming services, on-demand services to trick you into paying them for customer service or in some cases to sign up for illegal streaming services. You're trying to sign up for a live TV service. They say, hey, we have this IP TV service and they try to sign you up for it when you think you're getting a legal one. Be very careful of scammers. Be very careful whenever you look up phone numbers for companies, only call from official websites. Don't, don't just accept some phone number you found online. If you're going to call Netflix, go to Netflix, follow the steps, call them that way. Don't do it through some random site. Scammers are increasingly targeting people out there. All right, last story up of the day, Warner Brothers Discovery and AMC has struck a deal that will see six AMC shows come to max starting on September 1st and running for about 60 days. This deal will bring in total 200 episodes of AMC um, content, including Fear the Walking Dead to max as a tastier. AMC has been struggling with their AMC Plus content. I'm assuming they're hoping that by doing this test with Max customers, some Max customers will come and sign up for AMC to keep watching AMC programming. It'd be interesting. I've said this for a while, there are more streaming services than the market can bear. Some of them won't make it. So this is a sign that AMC may not be one of them. We'll see. But great news here, if you are a Max customer, you will get a bunch of AMC content coming in September. You'll get 60 days to watch it, so make sure you bend your way through it and enjoy it. Well, that's it for today. Hopefully I'll be back tomorrow. If not, head over to the Wandering Luke channel. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. It's my um, personal travel YouTube channel. I intended a launch right before I found out I'll be buying back the site. So I kind of put it on hold, but if the storm gets close and I'll shoot a little video and kind of show you my experience going through the hurricane here over there. Hopefully I'm here tomorrow. If I am not, that's because the hurricane um, knocked out the power or made it difficult for me to record. Until then, take care, everybody. Be safe. I'll be back again real soon.